everybody. Welcome to Coldwater, Michigan here at Bish's RV. Today with us, the little 22 Gray Wolf. Um, this is a, uh, a Murphy bed, no slide, easy camping bunkhouse right here. And it weighs, I think, less than 4,300 pounds empty and about 7,500 pounds, give or take, uh, fully loaded. So this is something that is really, I think, just an ideal fit for most tow package half tons. Uh, th this camper actually weirdly has like one of the most absurdly large cargo capacities I've seen. Um, and it's kind of funny because it has no slide eating into the weight. It just instead has a huge amount of cargo allowance. And in my experience, RVs that have a really high cargo capacity tend to be the ones that stay out of the shop the most. And I think it's because the whole structure isn't stressed the entire time you're going down the road. Now this one also does a couple things a little differently that a lot of people ask for. So many uh, floor plans like this out there, for sure. This is not a unique layout within the industry, but they did it with no camp kitchen. And there's so many people who will come and look at a camper and go, I like it, but can't I get it without the camp kitchen? And this one, that's just how they build it. Max cargo space, huge cargo capacity. If you want a small camper, but you are going to just pack the living daylights out of this thing, this is one that I think is up to the task right here. It's carpetless, it's easy cleaning. Um, it's got a bendy bed, Murphy bed, but you could also just completely ignore that since it doesn't have a slide to contend with. If you just wanted to leave the bed down and use it in queen bed mode the whole time, well, there's nothing that says you couldn't do that either. It's got a couple great points. It's got a couple hiccups and drawbacks. And I'm gonna show you the good with the bad as we go. And if you appreciate the fair look at things, make sure you hit that subscribe button and let me know what you like and dislike as we roll through today's footage. So first and foremost, one of the things this floor plan is going to do very well, you know, you can sort of see it from the outside, but it's actually even more obvious on the inside, is the great campsite window coverage you get on this one. And look, look at the Jayco creeping in on us over here. He's like, what are you doing over there, Cherokee? <laughs> Another really unsung quality and easy to miss feature, especially if you're a first time RVer and you don't really know the differences on this stuff. Uh, the fact that first of all, that's a 15,000 BTU air conditioner. And secondly, that it is centralized to help make sure you get even air distribution. Even though this is a smaller, primarily one room floor plan, they still give you the ability to really maximize your comfort here. Now an interesting 23 update they have added this little, almost like ground effect light right here, which during the day doesn't seem to do very much. But um, when it's a little bit darker, and actually it's kind of a really cool, like help you get your bearings welcome home light, it will shine the word gray wolf right there on the floor. Um, and, and you know what, for the most part, it's just eye candy. It's not really super functional or impacting. But again, if you're walking into the RV at night and you don't want to leave all the lights on to burn up your power or to collect a big old cloud of gnats by the window, you can leave that little, um, welcome home kind of welcome mat light on that hey, welcome mat light. Yeah, that works. Okay. I hadn't really thought of what to call it before now, obviously. And you can see what you're doing to get inside the RV and right next to the door, there's a motion activated backlit master control panel to kind of, you know, tell you what you're doing here. Now this is a Murphy sofa. It is a bendy bed though. So I want to kind of run through this thing a little bit to show you how it works in all its little forms. Kind of showing you, you know, the in-between stage, the up and the down stage. And one of the other things on this, if you're stuck inside this RV on a rainy day, you can basically like put the bed away, but you could leave the bed out the rest of the time uh, if you wanted to. And uh, kind of just have a little bit of, um, I don't know, extra lounge space. Like I could totally see my daughter kind of curled up on the rear mattress behind the sofa using it like a, a little rainy day phone watching game station if we are stuck inside. You know, if I'm stuck inside all day in a camper when it's raining, a lot of times we'll just hop in the car and try to go find like a movie theater or a museum or some kind of point of attraction uh, near the campsite. But we do kind of allow everybody a little bit of time to sort of do their own thing. Sometimes that's a little bit nice too. So, you know, to each their own. How do you, you know, if you're in a no slide bunkhouse like this yourself on a rainy day, how do you kind of survive the cabin feature? I'd love to hear it. You may have noticed that is a carpetless uh, camper, no floor vents, easy cleaning. Also the fact that they have very much lightened and brightened up their decor. Now, what's funny is it's still on the warmer side of a brown tone, but it's not that near black espresso brown that it was last year. So the whole camper to me is looking, feeling, and reading bigger than it ever used to. Now you may have noticed around both sides of the, the Murphy sofa, there were household and USB plugs. You'll find household plugs over here. You'll find, you know, a uh, double set of household plugs we'll get to see in the kitchen. There's some plugs around the bunk area. There's all kinds of good things going on here. 
But again, I'll show you the good, the bad, with the ugly, with everything in between. Like, I love these big cabinets they have above the dinette. But you may notice um, they don't exactly hold themselves up. There's some small, simple, easy things you can do to overcome that, thankfully. Now, over here in the kitchen, great space for a wastebasket. Two big drawers instead of two or three small drawers is a nice touch. That way you don't have a, uh, a spatula being like, boy, sure would be a shame if somebody were to block you from getting that door open, you know? Anyone else ever have that problem with a drawer? I know I have. Um, big skirtus, uh, skirtus? Hmm, nope. Skirted, stainless, there we go, sink inset into that sealed edge thermal foil counter that you find all the way through. Um, and down below, that big 10.7 cubic foot 12 volt DC compressor fridge, fast cooling fridge uh, with max capacity, battery disconnect and battery voltage monitor, basically almost like uh, your, your, your gas gauge, but you know, for the battery, how much lightning is left inside of that little box right there. Now up top here, of course, we have our central air vents, and right now we're in quick dump air mode, by the way. Handy little tip, if your RV's having a hard time cooling on the ends of it, close those little fins so that the air actually starts pumping through the centralized ducting. Now, that obviously only applies to centrally ducted air units. Now, when we were over looking at the bunks in my flyby footage there, did you notice how it kind of has privacy curtains? It's got one big curtain and then one small curtain, so... If the uh, bottom bunk, or if the top bunk wants privacy and the bottom bunk doesn't, pardon me, let me get the door out of the way, a lot of people are going to look at this and say, no, you can't do that. But you see how I have that curtain just kind of tucked under the mattress right there? You could do the same thing up here. If, the, if you want to enclose the top bunk and not the bottom bunk, pull that curtain over and tuck that curtain under the mattress after you've pulled it over, and there you go. The bottom bunk will remain open and airy while the top bunk is all nicely enclosed. Um, this is not a model where a TV comes in uh, from the factory. It's a little bit of dealer's choice. But actually, that TV positioning, you see that black bracket uh, against that dinette wall, the bunk wall right there? That's very good positioning sitting from the sofa right here. Or if we slid forward, if you were sitting here at the dinette, obviously you're just like straight across from this thing like a THX commercial getting blown away. If you're facing the other direction on the dinette, well, you better have eyes in the back of your head, which if you're a mom, good news, you've got that covered. Um, the bottom window is a fire escape window, which means it opens for just serious airflow. You see the USB plugs there, USB plugs there. The top window, though, does not open. Again, sharing the, the real deal of Vander Holyfield kind of info for you. Now, over here in the bathroom, once again, it's a case, I think of good news, bad news, but definitely more good news. Sliding our way in here, first of all, looking down below, there is awesome space around the toilet of this one. I don't care if you're long-legged like me, if you're fluffy and wider than I am, if uh, you're left or right-handed using the butt napkins, you've got plenty of space in this one. This also has, uh, it's really kind of becoming a, a normal thing for them, the Cherokee Shub. Not quite a shower, not quite a tub, but what it does is uh, it keeps that curtain in the shower while still giving you plenty of available room around the toilet. Now, with this being a six and a half foot sidewall, that means that my head, yeah, it's definitely up in that skylight. But what is also kind of cool is up here, just standard from the factory, they're using the Fajita Friday fume fighting fan instead of the dollar store four inch fart fan. But flipping around the other way, like, other than the headroom in the shower, everything in this bathroom, for my money, is on point. You've got a huge Lipitorge storage galorage corner cabinet, which I like. It just, when it's on that bias angle, it just feels more natural and organic. Big sink. The only downside to that sink is that it limits your toothbrush space, but there's enough little, like, if you had a little toothbrush organizer behind the faucet, I think that would work. And over here, this is one of the first views that you have of one of the new 23 updates a tankless on-demand water heater so that if you're doing a bunch of showers in here, you're going to have plenty of room. Now, normally, I would show you the RV in road mode, but with this one having no slides, one of the cool things about this floor plan is if you just pull in at night and it's late, you don't even necessarily have to unhook from the vehicle. You can just come in, plop the bed down, call it macaroni, and then set and level it in the morning. Or maybe linguine instead of macaroni. I don't know how you roll. Regardless, one of the other ideas I want to give you here is if you're like, I don't, I don't care for that. I don't care for that at all. I don't want that whole Murphy bendy bed situation thing going on. You don't have to. Because there's no slides to contend with, you don't have to worry about the bed clearing a slide facial when it closed. 
You could pull that out. You could put in whatever mattress you pleased. You could put a foam topper above it, below it, however you want to do it. And you could just make it a fixed walk around bed. And I don't know if you noticed, but when the Murphy bed was in the down position in the sleeper mode, um, I, I'm a little bit over six foot. My, uh, I perfectly fit on a short queen. Although, uh, if I was going to have a pillow under my head and be away from the wall a little bit, yeah, my feet would hang off the edge. But did you notice how the sofa hung off the edge a little bit? If you put a 60 by 80 true queen into this, it will fit perfectly because it will just overlap with where the sofa sticks out already. So there you go. The more you know. Now to give you a little bit of an AB comparison, here is what these looked like previously. And here is what they look like now with the 23 updates. Uh, so it's, you know, more than just the interior that was completely changed out. Basically, all the dark gray panels on the exterior, they swapped out for just a polar white. Now, personally, I think it looks more high contrast and fresh and clean. It actually looks a little bit just more like a classic camper to me, but I am a very simple Midwestern boy who is very function over fashion, and sometimes simplicity is very appealing to me. Also, I like the fact that a lighter color skin should organically reflect and shed more heat in direct summer sun shine so that should actually help this thing stay a little bit more comfortable now again being fair showing you good with the bad nice compartment here but because they standardize like they're uh an outside shower and their water heater on the other side it is not a full true pass-through compartment that some brands have but with every advantage comes a disadvantage, you know. Um, they do include a little handy propane cooker hooker right up front here. So that if you uh, feel like adding a grill or a griddle or something like that, you got the space to... Ow! I just ran into the tongue hitch of a trailer next to me. It is not easy watching this camera and trying to think about what to say while already saying one thing and, you know, trying to use the force to figure out where you're walking on a given moment. Um, this is one of these, again, just little minor 23 updates, kind of like we talked about inside, I think, I can't remember what I've talked about already. Uh, a little light that basically just shows the Cherokee logo shed down on the ground, a little kind of ground effect accent light. Now, in the um, sneak peek prototype uh, video that I put out there, you may remember they were testing the idea of like mirrored skin windows and entry door. And while it did look really cool, it was murder to keep clean. Um, and uh, especially that entry door with kids in a bunkhouse leaving fingerprints on it, it just always looked really, really bad. So they decided to just peel that out and not go with the, uh, the mirrored window concept based on, uh, well, actually a lot of consumer feedback. Now it's not a big RV. It doesn't have the world's biggest awning. Um, you get what you get, and uh, if it was my daughter, I'd tell her you don't throw a fit, but you're not my daughter, um, and uh, you're a consumer. How you spend your money is obviously up to you. <laughs> awesome campsite viewing window over here, plus the window in the entry door, and the bunks, and the bedroom. Great campsite window coverage. The speakers are nice and down low by your chesticles. You're not blowing away the neighbors with your Freedom Rock. And back here under the bunks. This is, I think, one of the major defining qualities on this camper. Instead of a camp kitchen, it is just pure max cargo space. And remember, this having that huge cargo carrying capacity, this one has the ability to really get loaded up heavy with a lot of stuff. You can keep a lot of junk in that trunk right there. Notice that we still have that, uh, at this point, almost Cherokee signature feeling fold down cargo rack on the back. And something I am very glad to report, the spare tire has finally become standard. It just, it was baffling to me for so many years that it was optional. It was even more baffling to me the number of dealers who would not order their RVs with a spare tire to benefit their customers so they could sell it for a dollar cheaper. That just has never sat right with me. Notice though, uh, that uh, extra third taillight. Cherokee is actually kind of predicting that some extra safety features like that will become standard in future seasons. And they said they wanted to be the trend setter and not the trend follower. I, I don't know, for lack of a better explanation here. I, I didn't really think about that before it came out of my mouth, but that is basically pretty much on brand for me at this point. LCI Insight Bluetooth backup camera, so you can make sure you're not squishing kittens when you back up there. And you see that black mount. Um, it is now prepped for one of those telescopic removable ladders, but you notice there is no ladder present. That's because they only include the mount. 
If you need the ladder, they're not hard to get a hold of. You got them on Amazon or any major retailer. We've got them over in the shop. And to give you a little peek up at the roof right there, one of the cool things that you can see on that walkable roof is of course that 15,000 BTU air conditioner, but also <laughs> you can hear the loud traffic next to the road. But beyond that, you can see the expanded solar for 23. Previously, these had a 50 watt little battery tending solar package, and you see two panels now, basically. It's a 100 watt package, but they've also improved their charge controller so that if you do want to um, you know, expand on that further, you have the ability to do so. Although, in doing so, you may actually need to uh, change out some of the wiring uh, to get a thicker gauge of wiring to handle more juice. Now, I'm kind of stuck in between a couple campers. I can't get the whole thing in the broad side view here, but I do want to point out what's above that right-hand window, that black rectangular box. That is your stovetop vent hood. So when you are cooking up a storm, you can exhaust the heat out of the RV, which is nice. And this is, um, this is something that like truck campers have been doing for ages. A lot of say uh, class B vans have been doing for ages. Tankless on-demand water heaters. Because you figure you got a bunkhouse, you've got multiple bodies, and maybe you're cooking and you need hot water and you've got lots of people running through the shower. Basically, as long as you've got any 12 volt, which with a solar package, it's a little more difficult to run out. And as long as you've got propane, folks, you got hot water. It, it heats on demand as you go. So nobody needs to take that, um, well, we had a bad date, cold shower. You know what I mean? <laughs> Now, quick little shop and pro tip for you here. Cherokee RVs with their juice pack come with a battery from the factory. It's a simple lead acid battery. But the reason I wanted to point this out is uh, so that you don't get taken advantage of out there so that somebody doesn't try to double charge you for a battery. Say, well, you know, you need to pay for a battery. Uh, campers don't come with those. Well, this, these do. Every Gray Wolf, Wolf Pup, Cherokee, Alpha Wolf, Arctic Wolf, Wolf Pack, any wolf, basically, they're all going to come with at least a basic battery from the factory. Now, if you want to upgrade to a second battery or get something fancy like a lithium, yeah, you're probably going to need to pay for that. But know that at least the base battery is equipped on this from the factory and don't pay extra for that. Little tips like that, hope you appreciate those. And if you, uh, again, like the fairway, we show you the ups, the downs, the in-betweens on this one, hit that subscribe button or like our video if you've already joined us previously and are a regular member of the RV Nerd Herd. <laughs> now again, they're not the only ones that make a floor plan like this. I'll try to dig up a couple similar campers and leave some links in the description if you'd like to compare. And short of that, let me know what you like, let me know what you change given the opportunity, and I sure appreciate you tuning in once again. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.